Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and welcome to a video series based on the liver. This is the first part of the series which is about liver anatomy. The next parts will be about liver surface anatomy, anatomic relations, cross-section anatomy and finally histology and histopathology. We will use CT images to see the liver and its structures. Here is the liver in the right upper quadrant. This is a coronal image on a CT scan with contrast. Firstly, we will talk about its surfaces. The diaphragmatic surface is the superior surface of the liver. It is convex shaped and is in contact with the diaphragm. The inferior surface is the visceral surface. It is a complex surface as it is in contact with many organs. Here you can see it is in contact with the right kidney and the adrenal gland. This small structure is the adrenal gland. This structure with gas is the stomach. This margin of the liver is in contact with the stomach. The esophagus is also around this area above the stomach. This fluid filled structure is the gallbladder. In this image, you can see that the liver is also in contact with the duodenum right here at this point. A small margin of the liver is also in contact with the transverse colon at this point. Here is the right colic flexure which is also known as hepatic flexure. It consists of a curve at the junction with the transverse colon. So you can see that the visceral surface of the liver is complex. Now we will look at the lobes of the liver. The largest lobe is the right lobe that occupies the right side of the liver. This is the right lobe in the coronal plane and here is the right lobe in the axial image. The left lobe is smaller than the right lobe. This is the left lobe in coronal view and here is the left lobe in the axial view. The right and left lobes are divided by the falciform ligament which is present at this location. This is the fissure for the falciform ligament. This hypodense line divides the liver into right and left lobes and can be seen in both coronal and axial planes. The caudal lobe is smaller and is seen at the posterior superior aspect of the liver. It is seen well in the axial view and is positioned between the left lobe and the inferior vena cava. This is the IVC right here. The caudate lobe is present between these two structures. The quadrate lobe is present posteriorly between the gallbladder fossa and the ligamentum teres. Here we will get a better look at the ligaments and fissures of the liver. This hypodense line that is dark line is the falciform ligament fissure which divides the liver into right and left lobes. The ligamentum teres is a remnant of the fetal umbilical vein. It is found at the free end of the falciform ligament but in a CT image it is not really visualized well. The ligamentum venosum is a remnant of the fetal ductus venosus. It is found at the inferior surface that is the visceral surface but in a CT image it is also difficult to see. The porta hepatis also known as the hilum 
is an important landmark because it is the point where the vessels and ducts enter and exit the liver. We can see the porta hepatis in this image. This smaller vessel is the hepatic artery. We can see it entering the liver. This large vessel is the main portal vein. It bifurcates into two branches after entering the liver. The bile duct can also be seen entering the liver at the porta hepatis in this view. Here is another image in which we can see the vessels. The hepatic veins will be seen up here exiting the liver and draining into the inferior vena cava. The hepatic veins do not exit the liver from the porta hepatis. They emerge from the liver's superior surface, converge and then directly drain into the inferior vena cava just below the diaphragm. This large blood vessel down here is the portal vein. And in this image, we can see the hepatic artery near the portal vein. This smaller vessel is the hepatic artery and the larger vessel is the portal vein. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.